Hi everybody, I'm Nancy Byrne from the City of Las Vegas, Channel 2, and welcome to our new Hangout. On the first Tuesday of every month, we're going to bring in new guests to talk about key issues in the city, and for this one, well, we have the royalty of the city, <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Carolyn Goodman and our city manager, Betsy Fretwell. We just want you to know that this is being recorded if you're not watching it live, and it'll be re-shown. And, and let me say something right off and interrupt. We are very impatient people. Betsy and I, and we like to see results and see them quickly. So hopefully this can be great and very, very successful. And it otherwise we wouldn't be here. Right. So let me tell them where to go if they want to see this. Again, it's youtube.com slash city of Las Vegas. Ready to find ready to dive in. I'm ready. Yeah. Go for it. All right. Let's first of all take a talk about a really amazing award that was really special to you at the US Conference of Mayors. I just happen to have a prop here. <laughs> it is our Mayor's Climate Award that was given to us, actually sponsored by Walmart. And believe it or not, that's because I've been frightened to tell you this, oh, really? because I knew you would spend it as soon as we had it in hand. We're getting $25,000. Really? I don't know that. So, yeah, that was so it's fabulous. We're a bit of green fund, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but what's unbelievable is we were the winner out of all the cities in the country over a hundred thousand. So this really was remarkable as we have been pursuing sustainability and staying green. So we're really proud. Well we were on the forefront. I mean we were talking about sustainability when people had to look the word up in the dictionary. Don't you think how long do you think we've been really pushing forward to be green? Well council took early action in two thousand six. As you know there was a lot of conversation around that time in the country about really taking local actions because there was kind of a stalemate at the federal level and international level. And so many of the large metropolitan cities coalesced together through the U.S. Conference of Mayors. And actually, Mayor Oscar signed on to a resolution through the Conference of Mayors, and then we brought a similar locally applicable one to the city of Las Vegas City Council in 2006. And actually, we're working on a presentation to council to bring some recommended updates to that strategy particularly as it relates to energy, because we have just made incredible progress. Yeah. And 141 mayors signed on initially in that climate award. Mm -hmm. There were 1,000 today. Mm -hmm. So it really has um, gone all across the country. Everybody's so concerned, whether it's in the water or the energy mm -hmm. or emissions. And everybody's really on board. So it's really it's a good time for Las Vegas, even through the hardship of what we've been. And I think a lot of people don't realize that over the course of the last several years of focusing our effort on this, we've been able to decrease our greenhouse gas emissions back to before 1999 levels. So we're aiming to get back to before 1990 levels, which is kind of what that resolution suggests we ought to achieve. And we've done that while adding 25% to our population. I mean, really, no small feat there, and we're really making a difference, and so those local actions do matter. And so it's, the city has always been proactive on everything. Um, even when we were having budget issues, we were the first ones to, and we work with this too. And now we don't have to panic because the report just came out and said like needs to be you know, this post, -like, you know, because we're well, already we have reserved. Reserved. We've already got banked water. We understand. And while it looks terrible because the water level has gone down so much, I think what I'm going to do is ask Betsy to get a group of staff to go out and paint the water line. <laughs> so nobody will be concerned. We'll, we'll have to get the artist because it really needs to look like a natural rock formation. <laughs> right? So when you're flying in over <laughs> like paint, you go, oh, the water level's up. Um, and also, just a quick mention, you also, along with your husband, many people are familiar with, former Mayor Oscar Goodman, also won another award from the Conference of Mayors and the Architecture folks yes, for that was our beautiful downtown. Right, because of the eclectic design of all the different buildings when you look at the World Market Center, the Design Center, mm -hmm. you look at the Cleveland Clinic, the Roof of Brain Institute with the Frank Gehry design front, which is really remarkable. I mean, we've just, with the Smith Center Performing Arts, we've just done so many adventurous um, undertakings here in Las Vegas. So that's why it's so exciting to live here. It's just the place to be all the time. We're always in bed at the noon. And we're going to be in bed once again as we talk more about a sports arena, a stadium. stadium. She soccer. was just watching the soccer match. I know. <laughs> I'm not waiting on her anymore. <laughs> Let's hope the USA pulses will now be to Belgium. I've got it on in the uh, office. So anybody who has to be watching this know 
that we would really like to know what's going on in that sport. <laughs> but it really is, it's the world sport. It is the world sport, and I think the United States has really woken up to that fact. Because football, which is what it's called everywhere else except the United States, is um, really what the city's looking at now. And we know that it really is something that we can do, and certainly we're all set up for it with the roadways and everything that's happening. And speaking of roadways, do you want to talk more about soccer? Well, I, I think it's important to note that really um, soccer right now, with the amount of viewership that's um, taking place with the World Cup and kind of the excitement around them, I mean, the U.S. is in the gang of 16 and hopefully does really well today. This is the third highest viewership for a sport. You know, so behind college football, college American football, um, you've got soccer in the third position. And it's a growing sport. It's an area where we feel like there's a great home here in the city of Las Vegas. We're trying to make an arrangement so that we can land a team here. And we're working with great people like Justin Finley and the Cordish family to make that happen here. So we're really excited about the potential. And thankfully, we have all the best parks in the world, where we have the greatest soccer fields in the world, and we can grow all the soccer players right Well, now. and I think across the country right now, there's a huge concentration, one on mental health, one on uh, problems of the brain caused by sports, contact sports. And so I think parents, too, are looking at, what well, can I put my child in just develop a love for a sport that really has a minimal, even though we see contact and them sliding mm -hmm. into each other, it really is less problematic. And for us here in the city, we see it as a wonderful gateway to opening um, a sport at a reasonable ticket price mm -hmm. so everybody can come in. And it's not as costly as the smaller arenas that are housing the NBA to get into and get a seat. It's so costly and we love our people here and we love our tourists and we want them to come in and see something fabulous and exciting. So to us this is in addition to being the world sport, it is really something that will be accessible to our visitors as well as to our locals who we know will love that competitive edge that we're going to have. And if you still have any doubts that soccer is popular, just turn out for a, a Saturday afternoon at one of our soccer fields. Oh, no, for the Mayor's Soccer Cup. Yes, yes. yes. Now that is from that, <laughs> that uh, soccer tournament that we have twice a year, once in the fall for our younger people, and then uh, really January, February for the high schoolers because they're looking at college scholarships. Mm -hmm. So aside from everything, I mean, it really is our sport. It's a great sport for the city. Um, we have been getting a lot of questions through social media and, and I think council offices um, about the Rainbow Company Youth Theater Program. Brian, do you have any update? Well, I, I think there's a there's quite a bit of information that's floating around. Some of it's probably accurate, some of it's inaccurate. So what we're doing is we're setting up a, a community meeting where we can talk about what's really going on there, what some of the investment levels have been, what they can be, et cetera, et cetera, as well as the programming impacts. So we're trying to schedule that for August. Uh, it's very difficult to get everybody together in the middle of the summer when people are on vacation. So we want to make sure that people who want to participate have plenty of notice. So we'll be setting that up. We encourage people to look at our website and keep informed. We're also going to be putting together a blog and writing up social media uh, responses so that we can get the information out about the exact time, location, and date of that meeting. And I think we'll get this all worked out. This is an incredible program. The city is terribly proud of it. Wonderful success. I mean, even recognition from the White House um, in, in our past on this. So we're really cognizant of the value of the program. We want to make sure that it stays strong. And so uh, we're anxious to hear the feedback and then we'll uh, deliberate on what we do with that information and make some final adjustments. And it's a wonderful it's a program that's been <coughs> in existence for 37 years, concentrating on young people. And what's wonderful is there's so many children who really seek to find themselves early on when they're in those tough teenage years. And they just sort of feel maybe a little offside, or maybe they feel they want to express themselves. They don't know how to do it. Rainbow Company's been there for us for our young people, and many of them have gone on, really, and I know one in particular who go on, uh, went on and uh, moved to Ireland and was a recognized playwright, and really it all started with the Rainbow Company, the opportunity to sing, dance, um, do some of the great shows that they put on. So I think it's been a great investment by the city, and of course as we expand our cultural arts here, uh, that has really, really been significant. So yes, we're being inundated because there's a passion. Over 37 years of people who are now adults who've been part of it, 
who have children. And they come back, and they, the ones that have been through it and are now adults, a lot of them come back to help out with it. Right, yeah. and then the other thing is, is it's not exactly what we hope the kinds of programs we develop do. It's spurred a lot of other children's theater programs throughout our community. So there's a lot of opportunities available for kids now that weren't there 37 years ago as a direct result of this program. That's exactly the kind of result we want to see. So it's great. I, I think we've got some good things to talk about. Mm -hmm. Do we have a few more minutes? Because there is a question in here I wanted to because I know something's happening um, at the end of this month over across the street, World Market Center, that you're very excited about. I am. They had in January, since they are joint ventures now with the North Carolina Literature Market, they had the largest, best response they've ever had in their market. Cause causes us a little bit of congestion here <laughs> as far as moving around from our city hall and out. But it really is terribly exciting. Their pre-registration has exploded. They're up already 7%. Wow. And it looks wow. to be the best ever in the country. I mean, we're so excited about it. And of course, they have the accessories as well. And um, it's just, it's a wonderful time because, as you know, too, we've just in, uh, broke ground and are building the next 36 stores of the premium outlets. Uh, the I'm just vaguely aware of that. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> There's, There's a lot of people waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it really is it's a very exciting time, and certainly for the buyers and the wholesale buyers to come here and see it. So we get visitors from around the country, many of them want to stay downtown and enjoy what we're doing here. But they may well stay out on the strip and just use our wonderful roadways to come down. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to talk about? Did you want to touch on the project of the year? Or we can... Well, you know, when we look at the soccer stadium and we look at the development of the Symphony Park, 61 acres here, we really look at the fact that already in places, the um, 95 and the I-15, I-15 coming LA to uh, U going into Utah, and 95 coming out of the Phoenix area and going north. And so what it's done, Project Neon is a project that will take us from a very congested, what we call the spaghetti bowl, south to Sahara. It's going to widen, it's going to have new crossovers, new underpasses, and it's really going to make the access to the premium outlets, to downtown, to this entire 61 acres in the Smith Center, so much easier to um, move through and around. So we're excited. It's all happening now. It's all focused on downtown. And so we have the pad, and we have the way to get to the pad to do this wonderful soccer stadium and also continue with our wonderful Discovery Interactive Museum. Come on down and see the Smith Center. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have all these positive things happening after your little work going there a few years ago. It's positive to see these positive economic We're starting to see some nice recovery. In it. it feels a lot better than it did five years ago. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot to do with smart um, city leaders. I'm not just saying it because I'm sitting between two of them. <laughs> Not that we control her. <laughs> well, thank you both for doing this. This is a lot of fun. It's a real casual way for people to get their uh, questions answered. And, you know, it's just kind of like that. But we hope you'll invite us back. Well, absolutely. We hope you'll come back. Um, and we want to remind you once again that this is being recorded and will be on our city's YouTube page at youtube.com slash city of Las Vegas. We'll see you in the next Google Hangout first Tuesday of every month.